1982 in August when we are met in Frankfurt. It was very much interesting for myself and according to my knowledge at that time, something about mathematics and about the uh, toppling, the mathematics of toppling, which Allah teach us uh, for the creation. The mathematics of the doubling. Doubling. For example, <coughs> one. If oh, the one I brought you there. Yes. The one I mentioned in the mosque. Yes, yes, Are you referring to that? Yes, sir. Right, right. Now, uh, uh, it was so much for me inside me that I did not. Uh, I have some knowledge and many of things. I've studied some time about it, and uh, I made such a research, small research. And uh, uh, my question is actually, if there is a formula which we can say through this, Allah has uh, created uh, uh, the creation the whole life and through the mathematics of the double Yes. Because if there is, then. Uh, I might. I understand. I understand your question. Yes. Please sit down. <coughs> By mathematics of doubling, this young brother Muhammad Wada means that once uh, during the 1982 visit to Frankfurt, I explained to the young men present that uh, you cannot become victorious unless you follow the ways of nature and the reproductive system of nature. And that system is not uh, like a missionary system that uh, out of a community of 500 or 1000 just one missionary is expected to <coughs> produce or like the honey bee comb system where just one queen is reproductive and the rest are laboring and working to support the queen. The system observed in nature is very different. It began with doubling. When you study the form of early life, you come to realize that the odds against life were so great that if every cell was not capable of doubling, life simply could have could not have survived those great odds. So to begin with the early life followed the system of doubling. Each cell doubled and redoubled and redoubled with the result that in a matter of hours some bacteria made colonies for which there is no known number to count in, by, uh, in any human language. I mean, they fell to such size and number that no human language can cover that number because each cell multiplied. So that is what he is referring to by saying mathematics of doubling. I said in preaching, it is highly important that we follow the ways of nature and instead of depending upon a few missionaries or just a few very forward people, if each Ahmadi learns how to double at least once in a year, then that victory which appears to be far, far beyond, beyond your reach and is in fact receding from you at a faster pace than you are walking or running towards it. I explained to them that uh, it is a fact that people, non ahmadis I mean, are reproducing through the normal sexual system, the normal reproductive system, at a hundred times or more rapid rate then we are gaining, gaining converts. So how could you ever dream of capturing the entire world for the sake of Islam unless you rectify your ways 
and begin to imitate nature, nature of Allah. And the nature which was imitated by every prophet. And during the early time of prophethood, this was the phenomena which was responsible for great revolutionary changes and none other. This is what I tried to impress upon them. And also I quoted an example to make them remember this. It's a very interesting example. It is, it is said that the person who invented uh, chess, the king of China, it is said that he was a Chinese and it was the emperor of China to whom it was presented, but whatever the details be, they are neither here nor there. The conversation which passed between them, that is important. The emperor was so pleased that he asked the inventor of chess to name his prize, to name his prize, and it would be for him, for him, for his, for the asking. So he said, O oh, emperor, the prize is very big. I hope you will not mind if I ask that prize. He said, no, I name anything. My, my empire is far too big for you to defeat me. So he said, take one um, piece of rice, one seed of rice, put it in the first uh, uh, check, what, what do you call khana, first khana? Chess may be square, do you think? Yeah. Huh? Ah, yes. In the first square, and uh, two in the second square, and four in the third, and eight in the fourth, and uh, 16 in the fifth, and 30, 32 in the sixth, and 64 in the seventh, and so on and so forth. Calculate this number, and please give me only those uh, seeds of rice, which according to calculation, should fall to the lot of the last check, last uh, this is the square. <coughs> So the king was very much annoyed. He said, behead this man because he has insulted me. He asked too little. And he has insulted him by asking so such a trivial thing for me. The prime minister was a very mathematical man. So he kept on working in his mind and he uh, asked the king, begged the king, to permit him to speak. So he said, yes, what do you want to say? He said, we had him all right, but not for asking too little, for asking too much. Because if you sell the entire empire, still you cannot fulfill his demand. That is exactly how it works out. Because once I remember this, when I was uh, in the first year in government college, Somebody asked me this question. He said, look here, if there is a piece of paper so thin or so thick that in one inch, 50 sheets should be accommodated. And you put 50 sheets one over the above and that would make one inch. So take that paper and fold it, double it, 50 times. How high would be the height of that pile of papers? That was the question. So in those days there were no computers and my mathematics was very weak. It took me two days to work it out and ultimately can you imagine what the result was? Can any, anybody offer a guess? You Muhammad Oda? Pardon? How, how high the pile would rise if you fold the paper doubling each time? In? How, how, how big? Could it reach a mile high? More? So which is the highest, tallest guess? <laughs> yes? We larger than the planet Earth, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Much larger. 
<laughs> because it is 1 crore 66 lakh some thousand miles high. So take a calculator, you can now calculate it in a matter of minutes. Just you know, press it and continue to press. 1 crore 66 lakh and some thousand miles, not inches. So this is the fantastic mathematics of nature which Allah has taught us for the preservation of life and for the plan of future development and evolution of life. So at, as life progressed, the division of labor took place and fewer cells were involved. And a large, larger portion of the cells were uh, absorbed of the responsibility of reproduction in one manner. But in another manner, they continue to reproduce individually each cell or life would have got extinct. For instance, in, this, in the human body of every person, each living cell is reproducing and, and uh, multiplying. Otherwise, the daily use of energy and the stress of our neighbors would uh, dissolve the whole body and dissipate it into nothingness within, within a matter of uh, days or weeks. Because every seven years, the whole system of the body, every cell is changed into a new one. And the number of cells is so great that uh, again there is no word in any language to count that number unimaginably high and that that body is maintained by the process of duplication yet for reproduction a, a just a few cells are specialized but when I say a few the order is still very high when somebody's count falls and uh, it is said that only uh, 100,000 cells per drop are visible, then doctors begin to express hopelessness about his possibility to bear children. They say the number has fallen so low that uh, you can't bear children now, there is a remote possibility. It has to be normally 4 million per field. So that is an immense number. So those have the capability of doubling and reproducing, reproducing uh, in the form of another human being. So I told him, if you want to really conquer the world for the sake of Islam, learn Allah's ways and know that at the time of every prophet, this was the phenomena I adopted, as we learned from the history of Ahmadiyya, it's a fresh history in our mind. At, at the time of Muslim Muhammad every Sahabi, every companion was a preacher and he was reproducing. And the second uh, advantage of this is, which perhaps he doesn't remember but I also told him, that if you reproduce at every level, then you draw a balanced society from around you. Like it happened at the time of Hazrat Masih Maudalai Salaam. A Nawab would be preaching to a Nawab, an advocate would be preaching to an advocate, a PN would be preaching to a PN. In their own respective spheres, Ahmadiyyad spread in a most well-balanced manner. A miniature society was created which was exactly depictive of the society outside. It was miniature but in proportion. It was reflective of what was around. But if you ask just the missionaries to preach, they have their limited reach. And every missionary has his own reach. Some can fly high, some can fly low. And uh, they can't change that uh, platform of their approach because they are made like it. So then you will be very limited in your approach. So which, whichever way you look at it, you should be fully prepared 
for a large scale contact with the non-Muslim world. A very large contact is to be made now. We have already lost so much time. This is why I gave the first target to Germany to be 100 German Muslims. And I said, as long as you do not gain uh, following from the local people who are the true sons of the soil, you cannot establish, establish Ahmadiyya anywhere in any country of the world. So I'm so happy that despite the fact that many of the boys there are not highly educated compared to other countries, compared to England for instance, the standard of uh, per capita education is uh, positively lower and much lower than that of the Ahmadis living in, in, in the UK. Yet their speed of progress and propagation is much faster because during the last uh, four or five months since I launched this scheme there, they have got 50 converts by now, with the grace of Allah. While ever since the inception of mission, up to the time when this new scheme was uh, introduced, there were not 50 converts over all that period. And among them, with the grace of Allah, 16 some are uh, uh, Germans and some are uh, uh, for instance, uh, Yugoslav, Italians, um, even Singhalese. And there is a wide variety of people coming from various directions. So the target was 100 German Muslims. And the next target which I wanted to give the German Muslims was, in particular, to swell to the size of 1000 as soon as possible. And the longest I uh, would, I was ready to give them was before the centenary. We should have 1,000 Muslims. If you reach the platform of 100, I assure you it will not at all be difficult. And during my short experience with various people of the world, my preaching experience is, is, uh, was limited mostly to Pakistan previously. But now I have reports from all over the world. From my experience, I can say that you can pin very high hopes in, in Germans. They are very serious. Once they accept a message, they become seriously devoted to it. And they don't take things lightly. And they are people who are ideal for regimentation. They have always produced results through regimentations. So through religious regimentations, 100 Germans can create revolution in the country. And uh, when, once they become 1,000, then you'll see the things changing everywhere in every direction, most rapidly. And that can become the first European country to become a Muslim, while it was the last to become Christian. So that is the beauty about the German people. They were the last to accept Christianity. In fact, it is wrong to say they accepted Christianity. They did not. The only people in Europe who refused point blank to accept Christianity were the German people. Until it was decided by the other German nations to put them to sword. And through the use of sword, they destroyed a large number of the Germans and uh, whatever was left was forced to accept Christianity under the punishment of death. So that, sh that is also a great compliment to them. Their simple straightforward minds could not understand the intricacies of, Christ of Christian doctrine of Trinity. This is why they didn't accept. And their simple straightforward minds are readily accepting Islam because it is exactly according to their nature. So this is why I am relying on Germans to first to become first a European country which should be declared a Muslim country. And uh, this is not a high tall, tall 
folk or high talk. The fact is that my, my short experience with them reassures me that the moment they reach these two stages, one after the other, first 100 and then 1000 German, then things will spread very rapidly, inshallah. So, that is the mathematics of doubling. Now you understand? No, I was asking him. <laughs> he had asked about this mathematics of doubling. So I was addressing him about it. Yes, please now continue. Is it the reason that the German are seeming inclined towards the Islam, or they are ready to accept that they have done so much research on Christianity and did not find anything because their research is very high? They have their own distinct approach to life. They are not like other ordinary people of Europe. In fact, every European country has its own stem its own stamp and style of character. So the French are different, the Germans are different, the British are different. They have, they have their own respective good qualities. I'm not denying the other European countries the right to, um, to be praised. They should be praised in their own respective qualities of excellence. But uh, for Islam, I think the Germans are, the, are by far the best. And uh, if there are others who think they are best, they should come forward, like Mr. Bashir Orchard, and he should try to prove me wrong in this respect by establishing a faster moving community in England. In this respect, I, I, I will not be offended if anybody proves me wrong. <laughs> So shall we say, uh, have the boys come after eating or they are still at it? <laughs> find out, somebody from Southern India will find out if the uh, Pudam are ready for prayer or not. Yes, please somebody raise his hand in the meantime. You, you did? Yes. 